Praise God. Welcome to everyone tonight and particularly our guests. If you're a guest tonight, we are so glad to have you in service with us tonight. We thank you for being here. If you're watching us online, wherever you may be watching from, we pray that you're blessed by this service tonight as well. In Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I want to read one verse to begin with tonight. That's verse number 15. 2 Corinthians 12. And verse 15. Paul says, I will very gladly somebody say very gladly I will very gladly spend and be spent for you though the more abundantly I love you the less I be loved that's I'm not going to focus on the second part of this verse tonight but if you're involved in ministry, you might as well expect the fact there's some you're going to give, and the more you give, the less they're going to love and appreciate. You're in good company. Paul was there. He says, the more I abundantly love you, <laughs> the less I'm loved. Some of you have desires of climbing the leadership ladder. tell you something that verse right there the higher you go the more you live it there's several folks in here tonight that can testify what it's like to love more and feel like you are loved less but again that's not what I want to focus on tonight we don't need a big pity party the Amplified says it this way, and I'm only going to read the first half because that's where I want to draw your attention to. The Amplified says, I will most gladly spend myself and be utterly spent for your souls. The Living Bible says, I am glad to give you myself and all I have for your spiritual good. I am glad to give you myself and all that I have for your spiritual good. Lastly, the Message Bible, I'd be most happy to empty my pockets, even mortgage my life for your good. I'd be most happy to empty my pockets, even mortgage my life for your good. To preach to you tonight, I want to ask you a question as my title. Are you spendable? Are you spendable? Father, I thank you for your wonderful presence we have felt manifested in this place tonight. I thank you for what you have already done. God, I believe there's some things you've done in this place tonight that only time will reveal what was accomplished. I thank you for that. I pray now, God, that your Spirit would speak to us through your Word. That we would be able to hear what you would desire to say to us. Give us hearts that are open to receive, God, the seed of Your Word, and let our hearts be good ground for the seed of that Word that it might produce in our lives. Father, I trust You tonight for Your anointing. I depend upon You, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The King James, Paul says, I will very gladly spend, but then he says, and be spent. I will spend, but I am also willing to be spent. 
The difference there is I decide what I spend on. But someone else decides how I am spent. I control what I spend for, but someone else controls if I am spent. Every one of us tonight, based on what we value and based on our resources and some other factors, we, we determine what we are willing to spend. I've walked through the store sometimes and a shirt or a sweater or a suit has caught my eye. And I've been quickly drawn to it and fell in love with it and wanted it until I found the price tag and I was not willing to spend what was required. I determine what I spend for. So Paul said, I, I'm willing to spend. I am willing to empty my pockets for you. But then he says, I'll go even a step farther. Not only will I spend, but I'll let somebody else spend me. To be spent, according to Thayer's lexicon, means this. To exhaust by expending. It means to spend wholly, to use up. According to Barnes' notes, be exhaust, it means to be exhausted and worn out in my labors. So the Greek word means. Paul was willing that his powers should be entirely exhausted and his life consumed in this service. To be exhausted and worn out in his labors. He was willing that his powers should be entirely exhausted and his life consumed in this service. Anybody ever, you don't have to raise your hand per se, I'm not really expecting that, but you just have to identify with this your own self. Anybody ever been maybe at a traffic light, or maybe you've been in a, in a city, especially a metropolitan city, it seems to be a little less in our local area from what I can tell, but you ever been in an area where somebody was at the traffic light or somebody was sitting on the curb and they had a sign and they were asking for money. Most of us, if we've ever tried to help somebody in those circumstances, we looked around for some loose change. We looked around for a dollar bill or two. I don't know of anybody that has ever gotten out their checkbook and asked for the name of the individual and then written in the total balance of their checking account. We give at a level of convenience. I am afraid that in 2018 there is an attitude and a spirit that has crept in to the church that we only want to give at a level of convenience. I've got some loose change, so I'll give you that, God. I've got some spare bills laying around, so I'll give you those. I've come to challenge this congregation. We are in a very excited, exciting season. I apologize. I haven't said it today, so let me say it now. We, I believe, are in the year of doubling. I believe we are in the year of doubling. I know we're several weeks now away from the high and the excitement when Brother the Cornwell as he was here. So the emotional high may be gone, but I don't know about you, my faith is still the same that this is the year that God said it and God was going to do it. But can I just tell this congregation tonight, we're not going to get that by giving Him our loose change. 
There's got to be an attitude and a spirit that comes upon us that says, not only will I spend, Go ahead, take a deep breath and relax. I'm not talking about your money tonight. That'd really be a lot easier for some of you because it's a lot easier just to put something in the offering without giving of myself. It's a lot easier to put a check in the offering and not change my personal schedule. It's a, not, it's a lot easier to go on to in fellowship, Brother Barr, and just click an online offering and not alter one thing in my life. But what Paul was saying was, I'm not just going to give you financially and monetarily. I myself am willing to spend. I am willing to spend. But then I'm going to go a step further. And I am willing for him to spend me. It is so deeply disturbing to me. The condition of the world we're living in, that sin is abounding. And it seems like that we are bombarded with more and more immorality and ungodliness. And the devil and his message are getting stronger and bolder. And the church is getting more watered down and weaker. We want to stop, we want to resist the onslaught of the enemy with a half-heartedness. Paul said, I will spend, I will empty my pockets, even mortgage my life for your good. I will withhold nothing. I'm not going to keep nothing. I'm not going to keep anything in reserve. Freely you have received. Freely you have received. So freely give. You and I are God's currency. You and I are God's currency. You know what? I've come to, I haven't come, I don't intend for this whole message to be heavy and maybe it will be, whatever. Some of you, you, you just, you got it all wrong. You've got it all wrong. Because you've got all your priorities set for life and You've got all your dreams and you've got all your goals and, and you've got all these things you're striving and working for. And God is just a part of all of that. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. I got a dollar. I got a dollar. Hey, hey, hey. You know what? There is absolutely no telling, Jalen. There is no telling where all this dollar has been. There is no telling what celebrity, what famous person may have had this dollar. Man, if there was a tracking device on here that could replay everywhere this dollar has been. This dollar has probably been to some places that you would like to go. There's probably been some places you wouldn't want to go, but I'm, 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 I'm focused on the positive. This dollar has probably been in some restaurants that some of you can't afford to get in. This dollar may have been in some clothing stores that you can't afford to shop at. This dollar may have been in some five-star hotels. There is no telling where this dollar has been. 
How did he get there? Not because it was born with a dream to go find a celebrity. Not because it lived with an ambition to get in a five-star hotel. Not because it had an ambition to go to a fancy restaurant. But it had one purpose, to be spent. And simply by being spent, it's been some places that you and I may never go. I haven't come tonight to beat you up with this message. I've come to challenge a few of you. God's got some places that he would like to take you. But the way that you're going to get there is not trying to figure out how to get there but it's simply doing like Paul said here am I God spend me I counted up a day or two ago as I was thinking about and preparing and studying whatever for this message I I have been in uh, over, a little over 25 different countries. Not counting a couple of places where I was just on a layover in an airport and didn't actually go out into the country. I was just in the airport. Out of those 25 countries that I've been, 20, over 20 of them, I was there because of one reason. It wasn't because I was on vacation and figuring out how to get there. It was because I was being spent. I've been to some amazing places that I can't afford to go. But I was just willing to be spent. So God took me places I might not have ever gone to before. All, not all of those places that I really want to be. I've stayed at a couple of places a couple of times where I didn't want to be there. I've also, we, my wife and I, a couple of years ago, we, we went to Jamaica. There's a, there's a deal that United Pentecostal Church Foreign Missions, Global Missions Department does. I don't know if they're do, still doing it, but they, for years they would do what's called the Top 100 Roundtable. And they would invite the churches the top 100 churches in the United Pentecostal Church and missions to come. And most of you had no idea of this, but we're usually in the top 20 out of, I think, 4,000 churches. That's a credit to all of you and all of the others a part of Antioch. We didn't know what we were getting into. We had no clue. No clue. I mean, you know, Jamaica. Let me tell you something. Just because the just because the name's appealing, don't mean everywhere you go there is appealing. <laughs> we had no idea what we were getting into. Boy, were we pleasantly surprised! We spent the first three days in this all-inclusive resort. All the all the drinks you wanted to drink, non-alcoholic, of course. All the food you wanted to eat. I had no idea. I was just going. See, you you, you got to be willing, God. Where are you going to send me? I, I I'm not determining. I'm not negotiating. I'm just saying, I'm willing to spend, and I'm willing for you to spend me. I pray tonight that there would be a fresh wave of the Holy Ghost that would move across this congregation that would give us the same attitude and spirit that Paul had that says, I will spend. I will spend. But God, I'm also willing for you to decide how you spend me. I ran out to my car this evening. I, I just have to. It makes me feel a little better. I have to confess. I just, I just, I had to stop by CVS on my way to church because the supply was. So I, I got my, I got a bag of sweet tart jelly beans and I, I left them in the car. I brought one handful when I first came to my office. And that was all I was going to eat. God, 
couple of trips later, I still left the bag in the car. That's got to be good for a calorie or two going to get them. And but you know what? I, I went back out there, the, not the first time, one of the other times. And I just happened to look down, and on the ground was a, it was a nickel. It's actually a little bit of a scuffed up nickel. It's got some wear and tear on it. Sister Joan, there's no telling. There's no telling where that nickel's been. There's no telling the places that nickel has been simply by being spent. I, there are some people in this place tonight that I believe in the Holy Ghost that if you would truly take off the limitations, take off the, 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 the prerequisites, take, take off all of your, 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 your restrictions and say, God, here I am. Spend me. Spend me, God, how you choose, where you choose, when you choose. See, what you got to accept is that sometimes God says, I'm just going to put you in my pocket for a little while. Well, we don't like that. We like being spent better than being stuck away in God's pocket. But sometimes God says, I'm not, you're, you're, you're not done. And as I've taught the last couple of years, whether it's being spent in the store or sitting in your pocket, the value remains the same. Way too many people got their value tied up in what they do. And their value is based on their title and position. And so when God says it's time for you to move on to something else, or... God says it's time for you to let somebody else step up and you step back. We struggle with that because our value doesn't come for us from who we are. Our value comes from what we do. But when I decide to give myself completely without reservation, my value is not based on what I do. It's based on who I am and more importantly, whose I am. And he has the right to choose how, when, where, to spend me. Philippians 2 verse 14, Paul says this, Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Keep going, keep going. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. The Living Bible, verse 17. And if my life blood is, so to speak, to be poured out over your faith, which I am offering up to God as a sacrifice, that is, if I am to die for you, even then I will be glad and will share my joy with each of you. New Living Translation. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life. Pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. If I am to be poured out as a part of the sacrifice, so be it. What happens with, with what gets poured out on the sacrifice? It gets consumed with the sacrifice. 
You see, there's a lot of folks that are more than willing for God to use them because of the status and the prestige that will go along with a position. Colossians 1.27 And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath He reconciled in the body of His flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Listen to this next verse. Who now rejoice... Colossians 1, 24. Who now rejoice in what? In what? He says, I rejoice in my sufferings. And get this, not just my sufferings, but I am rejoicing in my sufferings for you. I'm not complaining about my suffering. I'm not griping about what i got to do. I'm not moaning and groaning about it. Paul says, I rejoice in my sufferings for you. Oh, boy, we, we are so quick for mumbling and grumbling and complaining. Boy, I did blah, 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 this for so-and-so, and all I got in return was. You won't believe what... You won't believe what I did and you won't. Paul says, I rejoice in my sufferings for you. He doesn't say, I rejoice in the victories you have. Or I don't, he didn't say, I rejoice in the, in the benefits of my relationship. Or me. He said, I rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for His body's sake, which is the church. The Amplified says that verse this way. Even now I rejoice in the midst of my sufferings on your behalf. I mean, it's one thing just for me to suffer based on myself. It's another thing to suffer for somebody else. Paul said, I rejoice in the midst of my sufferings on your behalf and in my own person. I am making up whatever is still lacking and remains to be completed on our part of Christ's afflictions for the sake of His body, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister, back to the King James, verse 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to His saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I rejoice in my sufferings. I sat Friday morning, late Friday morning, went to breakfast with Brother John Hemus. He was in town for just a couple days so his wife could see her mom who's not doing well. I sat there with him and we were just chatting about various things. And I, I Somehow I was talking about some stuff and the latest happenings in my life, my family, and I was sharing with him about that last week and particularly the last night that we were at our house and me breaking down crying and everybody else crying and leaving that place behind. And he was talking and he wasn't, he was just sharing. It wasn't any, you know, you, you've been around, everybody know what a topper is? Yeah, you do. You don't know the, some of you don't know the term, but you know what it is. A topper is a person, whatever story you tell, they got one that's better. That's a topper. <laughs> so he wasn't, he wasn't trying to, Sister Leanne, he started, I, remember, I don't remember how he got on it, but he started talking about the day. Some of you know this, some of you don't, but right before the Hemus's left to go to England. They had just built a brand new home in St. Margaret's. 
beautiful home. And that's what they sold to go to the mission field. And his mother-in-law's house was very close by. And he talks about the day they pulled away from that house and that his wife cried all the way to Dulles Airport. That's a big difference in me crying over leaving a house behind because God's blessing us with another house. That's a big difference. But somebody was willing to be spent. I sat there, Sister Mott, Friday, and this really just just was so challenging to me because we were discussing when they were finishing up deputation. And Brother Hemus didn't say, well, we're going to be going back to the mission field in June, whatever, summertime. That's, that wasn't what he said, Brother Brown. He said, we're going home. We're going back home. Going back home. I don't know what that says to you, but that says for somebody who has spent 20 plus years in this country, a wife from this country, three children born in this country, to say I'm going home means I'm being spent. I'm not just going someplace to do what I got to do. I had a, I had a, I, 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 I really, maybe by saying that this way, I'm, maybe it's false humility. I don't even know. You judge me for it. I don't know. I really don't want to talk about it because I'm not, wasn't trying to do anything special. But I had an idea hit me a couple of weeks ago, and this morning I went and showed up to the Safeway parking lot where the bus starts its route for our anchor kids ministry that comes to Arnold. I I was so challenged, Sister Brown and other precious folks, by sitting there watching some people. Some of you, uh, I I really, but Chester said go ahead, so I'm going to go ahead. Some of y'all can't even get to church on time on Sunday morning. You come lollygagging in every single week, 10 15, 10 10. I said it, I'll say it again. I, ha- I have no issues with people being late on Thursday night. No issues. I understand most of you coming from work. And there's a few folks that have legitimate reasons, even on a Sunday. Some folks at work, some people taking care of various situations, but that's a very, very small percentage. Some of y'all are all got your, your stuff all tightly wound up. I sat as we traveled all over Annapolis. I said it this morning, forgive me for saying it again tonight in front of you guys, but it's absolutely ridiculous that that group has to go all over Annapolis the way they do. Hour and a half. I understand there was a new driver today that didn't know the route as well, and apparently that slowed things down a little bit. But an hour and a half to get to church. I I need to get back to the positive because I'm trying to challenge you with the positive. I am so deeply appreciative of some people that are willing to spend and be spent. And every one of you that's getting offended with me right now proves. How come you always talking about so-and-so and and you never talk about me because you hadn't figured out what it means to be spent yet? 
Because when you're willing to be spent, that means if nobody ever calls my name, if I never get recognition for what I do, that's okay. I'm willing to spend and I'm willing to be spent. We are so caught up with trying to schedule everything so neatly in to our lives. That's not what Paul was talking about. Paul wasn't scheduling God around his world. He was scheduling his world around whatever God wanted. I will spin. I will make the choice. But I'm going to go beyond that because I'm not going to maintain control. So not only will I spin, but God, however you want to spend me, then go ahead and spend me. Oh, hallelujah. i got to remind myself this is not shout and dance and message. 1 Thessalonians 2, 4, But as we, are, we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing Him, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetous. God is witness Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only. We weren't just willing to tell you about Him. We weren't just willing to communicate to you about Him, but also our own souls. Not just our words, but we were pouring out our everything. We were giving everything we had. We weren't just giving you what was convenient. We were giving you everything that we possessed. Oh, God, help us tonight to take all restrictions and limitations off of how we will spend ourselves and how you can spend us and help us to do as the Apostle Paul said and to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God as our reasonable servant. We're not just giving you the gospel. We're giving you our souls. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, We shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Wright, why should I spend and why should I be willing to be spent? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why should I be steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because your labor is not 
in vain in the Lord. My spending and being spent is not in vain. Oh, I wish I could tell you tonight that all of the benefits and all of the rewards get reaped in this life, get reaped in the temporal dimension, but I can't tell you that. Sometimes the rewards that we get are not in this life. But the good news about that is whatever reward I get in this life is a temporal reward, but the reward that I will get in the next life will be an eternal reward reward and so whatever it is that you do for Christ your labor is not in vain oh I beg some of you tonight I beg some of you tonight that knows what it means to spend and you know what it means to be spent but you haven't exactly seen the return on investment that you would have liked to have seen. You haven't gotten back all of the benefits and the perks that you would like to get. Can I challenge you tonight? Don't let bitterness and resentment get in your spirit because you haven't gotten all the rewards here and now. Perhaps the way you would like the promise still remains that whatever you do whatever your labor is it is not in vain it's not in vain it's not in vain brother and sister brown you other folks that are working with them the last couple of Sundays, she wasn't here today, but the last couple of Sundays, there's been a lady, she comes in late. But I think there's valid reasons why she comes in late. She comes in late. She sat right over in here. Sister and Krieger informed me last week, she used to come on the bus, on Mother Wright's bus in Annapolis. I know you guys have touched countless lives. There's other folks here. Brother Teach has been involved in the past. There's other folks that are currently involved. Can't call everybody's name. No, you haven't always seen immediate results and rewards. But according to what the Scripture says, it's not in vain. I got to... I, 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 got, I would imagine, Brother and Sister Brown, again, I, I, I know there's others of you that fall in the same category. It's not your night. <laughs> you guys have been, how long have you guys been doing bus ministry now, Robin Wood and all those? Started in 95. 95, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, that's 23 years. <laughs> Brother and Sister Brown, thank you so much for allowing God to spend you the way He has decided to spend you. See, the, the problem is some of us, we're, we're willing for God to spend us a certain way for a certain period of time because if He spends us that way for a certain period of time, that is going to buy us. Moving on up to the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. I'm just old enough, just old enough. Some of you are willing. 
to be spent on certain things because you know that's the way you earn promotion. Uh, I saw, sat, I don't, Sister Brown, there was a little girl. She was sitting on the front right, facing the driver's side, front right seat. I don't know if you remember which one I'm talking about. My guess is she was about four years old. About four years old. About four years old. About four years old that she was in the presence of God today would not have been there if it was up to her parents to get her there. But somebody was willing to be spent and continue to be spent. I, oh, I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't say this. I, I wonder if sometimes one of the primary reasons people get burnt out is because they are begrudgingly giving. And they are begrudgingly doing. And so they become resentful of what they are doing, but they don't really want to do. God, spend, spend me, spend me. And not only, God, am I going to wait on you to spend me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend myself. And look, look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at these eight young guys over here. Man, if you guys would make up your minds. God, you spend me. However you want to spend me. You got no clue what the future holds for you guys. No, not all sunshiny days and wonderful times. There'll be some difficult times. But you know what? If you, would, if you would say, God, spend me. I'm going to spend me, but you spend me. Why don't you go put that dollar someplace? I'm, I need a market or something so you know what it is. I'm not, I'm not being facetious. I want you to put that dollar someplace in your room. And every day I want you to look at that dollar. Because God wants to spin you. I know some of you, I, I, I'm so, I, I just, can I spew for a second? This is not Jesus. This is not Holy Ghost. This is my flesh getting in the way for a moment, okay? At least I'm acknowledging to you, my flesh is getting in the way. Well, since you're acknowledging it's getting in the way, shouldn't you push it out of the way? I don't want to. I get, so, I get so sick and tired of the petty jealousies that rise up. You know, I always call their name. You always recognize them. Yeah, and every time you say that and act that way, you just tell the whole world where your attitude and spirit is. I don't think you've scratched the surface of where all God wants to take you. But i got to ask you a question. As you sat in that auditorium Friday with 90 plus kids sitting there. Was there any part of that Friday that kind of reassured you that you made some right decisions? Why? Because a couple of months ago wasn't an easy decision, but you said, God, I'm going to spend me, and when I spend me, I'm also going to trust that you are going to spend me. I preach to some precious people tonight that there's some of you, you've got absolutely no idea where God wants to take you, but He can't take you there until you truly tell Him, spend me however you want to spend me. 
My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself away. My life is not my own. Because when I keep it, I keep it capped. When I keep my life, my life becomes finite. But when I give my life into the hands of the infinite God, the cap on my life is removed and there is no limit to where He may choose to spend me. Oh, you, you just might get spent like Stephen, I got to tell you that. You might just get spent like Stephen. One message. Kind of like March Madness, one and done. One message. One message. One message. One. 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 I know sometimes I feel guilty for it because I hear some people talking. Oh, they knew they were called to preach and they fought it. They I ran from it. I ran from it. I don't understand that because for as long as I remember, probably I think even before I recognized or felt like I had a call to preach, I dreamed of being a preacher. And I got to tell you, I never dreamed of preaching one message and being done. My dreams were thousands of messages. Stephen got spent one time. But the one time Stephen got spent, there was a man by the name of Saul that was standing there and watching what was going on. The sad thing is, Stephen never got to see the ultimate results of how he was spent. But for thousands of years, Brother Lewis, the world has been affected by a man that Stephen was spent for. No, you might not get to see the results of what God spends you for. You might not get to see the outcome of how God spends you, but you have the guarantee that whatever you do, your labor is not in vain. Please, I'm not here tonight preaching or implying that everybody in this place has never said, God, spend me. Maybe everybody in this place has already said it. And so if that's the case, then tonight is simply a challenge to you to once again, to all over again, tell God, I know I told you before, God. I know I've committed to it before, but I'm telling you all over again, I will spend, but I will also be spent. Use me however you want to use me. Send me wherever you want to send me. Do with me whatever you want to do with me. Anybody here tonight that can be like Paul and rejoice in sufferings that are for somebody else. But you rejoice because of what God is doing in you and through you. Some have come. Some are coming. I give an invitation beyond that tonight to those that are willing. Some of you, maybe it's for the first time to ever really truly do it fully. Maybe somebody here tonight, you've never truly said, God, spend me however you want to spend me. Do with me whatever you want to do with me. And tonight is that night. Or again, maybe you've had moments in the past But the Holy Ghost is drawing you tonight to another place of saying, God, spend me however you want to spend me, God. However you want to spend me, God. And I'm not just going to wait on you to spend me. I will spend. I will spend and I will be spent. I don't want my life to be all about me, God. I don't want my life to be all about me. 
But I want my life to be about you spending me for the good of somebody else. I want my life to be about you spending me for the benefit of someone else. Come on. I'm not trying to be unkind, but I'm preaching to some people tonight. You're trying so hard to neatly fit God into your world. You're trying so hard. You're trying so hard to put all kind of of restrictions and qualifications on how and what God can do. And God is asking you tonight, will you just let me spend you however I want to spend you? Will you just let me do with you and through you whatever it is I choose to do? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray tonight, God, that as a body, as a church, we are able to say to you, spend us. Spend us in whatever way you choose. Spend us wherever you choose, God. God spend somebody here tonight in a way that is so far above what they have ever imagined you could spend them for God spend somebody here tonight for such an impact in your kingdom that they never dreamed was possible through them. But because of what you're able to do and how you're able to do it, you can spend them. Spend them to do something that is exceeding abundantly above what they would ask or think, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everything. Everything I give, everything, 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 God. I'm not just giving you certain parts. I'm not just giving you certain things. But everything, God, everything. Spend us, God. Spend us for the sake of your kingdom. Spend us for the sake of the lost. Spend us, God. Spend us. Spend us in whatever way you choose. Spend us in whatever way you choose, God. Oh, withholding. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Somebody needs to take your restrictions off of God tonight. Some of you have told God to use you, but you've also given Him some restrictions on how He can use you. Some of you have asked God to use you, but you've qualified how He had to use you. Tonight, tonight, Would you take all of the restrictions off? Spend me, God, however you want. Spend me wherever you want. Spend me whenever you want, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ilamando robos atalabai. Spend us, God. Spend us. Spend us for the sake of our brothers and sisters. Spend us for the sake of this body. Spend us for the sake of the lost. Spend us for the sake of those that are perishing. Spend us, God. Spend us. 
we will spend and we will be spent by you. We will spend and we will be spent by you, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. give you all I give you all not just a part of me Jesus not just a part of me I give you all of me I give you all I give you all I give you all everything everything Everything, everything, everything. I don't want to hold anything back. I don't want to keep anything in reserve for myself, God. I want to give you all. 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 I want to give you all of me. I want to give you all of me. Aya Ramaya Katala Bahashiki Aya Ramaya Elamaya Rabose Yalamaki Aranda Rabashataya All of me, all of me, all of me, all of me, Jesus, all of me, Jesus. Do with me what you desire. Do with me what you desire, God. However you want to use me, wherever you want to use me, whenever you want to use me, spend me, spend me, spend me. 